Hello, everyone. All right, next up, we have a panel that we are calling Out of the Gloss. And I wanted to introduce our panelists today. Our first, Pietrick and Beckett, the designers of Area. <laughs> next up, we have Candice Reels, founder of Female Collective. And Jane Min, LA Creative. And our last panelist is Diana Gordon, the Grammy-nominated producer. And I'm Jackie Kim, the Associate Fashion Director of Barney's, and I will be moderating today. All right, guys, thanks for being here. Thank you. Everyone's mic's working, we good? Yeah? All right, so today we are talking about this idea of the undone because we are seeing a rising female voice in our industry and I'm really curious to see your take on how we've moved into this new modern woman in this undone sense and what does this idea of undone mean to you? So if you guys want to start from at the end? Do you hear me? Oh. Yes. <laughs> undone. Um, yeah, what does it mean? I think, I think it's pretty undone because there's a lot of things happening in the world and with women in general. And women are just kind of like pausing up and being like, wait a second. <laughs> like, I have my own voice, I have my own opinion. I, I can be strong, I have a career, I can feel sexy. I don't really have to per se look at my husband and think what he thinks about me. It's kind of like, how can it, become about you and empowering yourself. And I feel like that's really what's happening right now. And even being sexy, it's more intellectual, I feel now. I feel like sexy had a very bad taste in its word for a while. People think if you wear a short skirt or a short, short dress, you're too re revealing. But I think that's not per se the case now. You can be a super hardworking, successful woman with a lot of intellect and you do want to show your body and maybe it's not perfect or like perfect according to someone. I feel like it's not really about that. It's about having something on you and expressing that to the outside basically. So for you it's both inside and outside. It's like a feeling, intelligence and yeah. also how you look. Diana, I jump in there. Hello. I think today it's really important to be yourself. When I look Amen. at Cardi B online, it makes me really, really happy that People are no longer holding back. They're saying what everybody's thinking. Uh, it's not just, let me buy this expensive piece of garment. If it's cheap and it looks good on me, I'm going to wear it. And I think that people are starting to find their own way and like not really care about what other people are saying. So do you feel like the undone movement is more an attitude? Yeah. OK. Definitely. Jane, any thoughts? Um, I think it's sort of um, shifting public perception of what a woman is and the ideals, um, whether it's beauty or a career or just this idea that women are these perfect creatures and we have to look a certain way and behave a certain way. And it's just sort of taking more ownership of our flaws and the imperfections that make us all unique and strong. Um, and challenging the norms and creating a new norm. Candace? Um, to me, the undone is sort of like women are stripping away who they were pretending to be their whole lives, and now we are allowing ourselves to be vulnerable and be ourselves, and we're not afraid to express that. So it's more just like stripping away this person who, like, we have to be perfect, and we have to look a certain way and act a certain way, but now we're like, we can be who we are and still be successful no matter what. And I'm going to redirect this question back to you. Um, because of your platform, Female Collective, are there any key players in this movement that you feel are driving this idea forward? I would say, well, this is probably like a standard answer, but within fashion, I feel like Rihanna would be like a perfect answer. I feel like she's always sort of been herself and not afraid to like just express who she is and, and not like just be this one type of woman. Like we are multi-dimensional. We're not just one type. Like there's so there's so many layers to us. And I think now we're just like 
fully pulling back all those layers and showing them like who we are. So I would say her. I know it's kind of like a basic answer, but I feel like she is like, you know. Does anyone else have any other big? Well, I think exactly what Rihanna, the amazing thing is, is that um, she really strips down these layers and people just keep being captivated with a new woman that she, no, she's not a new woman. She's the same woman that kind of like reinvents herself because she's, getting older her body is changing her taste is changing her life is changing everything around her is changing and people are growing with her and that's kind of amazing you know that you really see that it's really about the, uh, her personality you know and that it's not about like anything around her it's like growing with her and kind of like learning how she kind of like evolves and that's kind of like the sincere thing and that how you said like just be yourself you know <laughs> like be it you're gonna be the best you what about in terms of fashion designers? Is there anyone that's, I mean, obviously you guys are up here with us for a reason. Is there anyone that's speaking to their customer in this way, kind of saying like, be yourself, you know, follow this movement, be empowered. Are there any brands that you feel who are doing it correctly? Well, I feel like there's so many young brands now that are um, really challenging kind of like what, you know, luxury fashion and like the traditional conformities that have been associated with high fashion have been for so long. And I think um, that's what's so exciting right now is that there's, you know, people are kind of stepping back and rethinking um, those ideas that have been in place. And, you know, and I, th I feel like in the past, especially like luxury high fashion has felt, you know, very exclusive in a way. And now it's feeling much more inclusive, which is such an exciting new direction. Yeah. How do you think that fashion's approach to femininity is changing in terms of design or even like marketing? And that's open to anybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I think femininity, but also, you know, it doesn't even necessarily have to be feminine in a way. You know, I think they're just responding to, you know, people and women in general. And I feel also just kind of like the word feminine is being challenged. You know, it's like, what gives you the right to call yourself a woman or, or feel female? I feel like that is kind of the amazing thing right now is that um, it's kind of open. It's, uh, if you want to be feminine, if you feel like that, if you, if you love it, it's, 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 it's yours. You know, it doesn't, have, it doesn't mean that you have to be born a woman even. I feel like, and that is the beauty now that it's getting so inclusive, getting, it's, it's getting so much more open. So like what femininity kind of was is not really going to be what it, but what it was, I think, because it's just there's just too much information. People's uh, visions changed so much over the years, for the positive. Do you think there's more that we could be doing as key players in this industry to continue to push this movement forward? I think we just keep being supportive, and as we have these young designers in coming out of school. Um, just keep showing them love and keep wearing their clothes. Um, just think support. Is there any young brands um, that you are championing right now? I like this girl named Lou Doyle out of uh, London. And she makes um, like uh, the corsets with metal pieces on the arms. I think she's really good. There's another woman named Lou Dallas that I really like. Um, there's so many. There's just so many interesting. I love area, you know. Same. <laughs> There's so many young designers. I mean, uh, a friend of mine named Marcelo Gaia has a new clothing line named Rose Milk, and they just made this. He just came up, had an idea, and he has good ideas and good patterns, and it works, and it's beautiful. It makes you look good. Anyone else want to jump in? Candice? Um, yeah, I would say support, you know, and then also just listen to, like, what the people want. You know, there's a lot of young kids who are, like, really expressing themselves on social media, and they're trying to tell you what they want, and if you just, see, if you just look for it, you'll find it, you know, they're out there. So, um, Diana, I wanted to ask you, your work in the industry, in the music industry, you've worked with a lot of artists who have dressed, female artists, sorry, who have dressed a particular way in order to send a message. Where, do you think that performance dressing is effective and how, how does one do it the right way? Um, 
I think throughout history, as we can see with Cher, to Tina Turner, to Madonna, that your look and outfit plays a huge part in people remembering you, remembering the era of your music, and really expressing your art. So I think that whatever you're trying to get across in your life comes out in the layers of your hair. It comes out in, in everything, from the crystals and your thong <laughs> to you know, your shoes. And I find that it's really important to find something that people can connect with, like the audience can connect with, with a female artist. I've seen this with Beyonce, seen this with Mariah. It's just really important to have something that's consistent. When you say connect with, can you give me an example? Um, I think everybody here knows what Cher's hair looks like, right? If we said, do you want to dress up as Cher for Halloween, would you know what to do? Yeah, yes. right? So, I mean, I think that being consistent helps to uh, imprint on other people's minds. Yeah. Um, do you, and Jane, do you feel that in terms of performance wear, that women in general are, you know, when, when you get dressed, right, are you putting out something into the universe, like making a statement? maybe subconsciously. I think just living in the world and being a part of the world and the human race, we kind of all do that to a certain extent. We don't live in our own little bubbles, but I don't think I am a person that consciously does that. Because you have always had such a cool style. I've been following you know, your style for a long time, and it's always a little bit unconventional. You know, you stay away from the norm. You're very, you have a lot of like masculine tailoring influences. <laughs> so where does that come from? And do you ever you know, s stop to think about what you're wearing in that sense? Um, I think mine stems from just my career of having um, a design and aesthetic centric work life, so I'm just kind of programmed to always gravitate towards things like that. <laughs> Excuse me. But in my everyday daily life, I'm so not like that. Like, I'm dressed crazy right now because I have a family dinner after this, but every day I'm in like t-shirt and jeans or sweats. I'm very much going into like the Steve Jobs world where it just like eliminates the thing. But I think, I mean, I've always had a tendency to dress comfort-based and for whatever works for me. And I think that comes with really knowing yourself and maybe some level of self-assurance or confidence and not dressing how everybody else is dressing or trying to look a certain way because that's the way you think you're supposed to look, I guess. I just kind of am like, I don't know. Rebel. This is who I am. Not really even a rebel. It's like not a conscious thing. Okay. But just, yeah, being like, I don't really care <laughs> and I'm not trying to be contrarian about it but just I don't know like I want to fall asleep in my clothes that's <laughs> my only standard comfort is key yeah um Candice what about you you are a, a big fashion girl you know you really love hats as from what I read do you get dressed in the morning putting on a face to the world I would say subconsciously like you do I feel like it's just you're like I mean, I'm a very shy person, so my whole life I've always expressed myself through my clothing instead of like actually speaking. And that was like, and that was a big part of like when I created Female Collective. I knew I wanted to create graphic tees that allow women to express who they are before they even had to say anything. So I do say like you are putting on like this face and this, you're expressing yourself to people without even talking. Can you tell the audience who might not know what is the Female Collective? Female Collective is a platform that I started about three years ago, and it's about celebrating, empowering, uplifting, and supporting all women. It became, I started because I was going through like a weird phase in my life. I had just turned like 26, and I was like feeling bad about myself, so like I wanted to find like inspiration online, and I didn't find anything. So I started my own Instagram account, and I just would post things that would inspire me and motivate me, and then it just started going from there, and then I created it into the female collective now. And the t-shirts that you had mentioned, what does it say on them? There's a lot of different ones. One of the most popular ones is Pussy Grabs Back. <laughs> and then I do have like 
um, the rise of the woman equals the rise of the nation. So it's a lot of like female empowerment t-shirts that allow women to just express who they are. Yeah. And make a statement, right? Yes, before, definitely. Like make you a said, make a statement before you even have to open your mouth. Yes. Um, I'm going to direct this question to my designers over here. You also have a t-shirt, I think you mentioned. You can talk about that, but I'm curious to know who it is that you're designing for. Like, who is your woman, and how does she play into this movement of the undone? And this, like, modern, you know, modern movement that we're going towards. Well, I think our stuff, you can see it over there. It's in a store. It's quite... Um, it's not obnoxious, but you see it immediately when you walk past it. It's, it's there to shine, it's there to attract you, but it's also there to make you feel really good about yourself. So I feel like our woman or the woman that we look at is definitely someone with character and definitely she definitely knows what she wants and has an opinion for herself. She wants to look something, she wants to pick something that will make her look the best that she can feel, it will make her shine, but it's more about like, her attitude, she, she basically can handle our clothes. So we're definitely looking for someone that has some type of attitude in her. And who she spef specifically is, the age, it doesn't really matter to us. It's more about the attitude than the age. We have girls that are 18, killer bodies, out of the town, but we also have like amazing women that are 70 years old and that look stunning in our stuff. So it doesn't really, that doesn't really matter for us. It's more about the attitude, I think. So your girl, you would say, is like bold, powerful, and these are all the things that make this new modern woman. So when we brought up the idea of the undone, which is, you know, in a way it's ironic because you think it's someone that's not polished, but you guys are speaking to more of this like powerful woman, so in a way it, she is polished. So what do you think about like that dichotomy? Because it's like a mindset, as you were saying. Can you speak more on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's less about, it's not like really necessarily a visual thing even about being undone. I think it's really just about like taking down these boundaries and taking down these preconceived notions that, you know, fashion stands for. And I think that for me is kind of what undone really means. It's, yeah. you know, not something that you visually see like, oh, she doesn't look put together. And maybe she does, you know. I think it's really more about how she's putting herself together, how she's composing herself and kind of, you know, what image she's portraying. And it's, it's really, it's more about the attitude and kind of, yeah, herself. Any other thoughts on that? I mean, I'm a big fan of area because I think it's, I think people might think that it's this look and it's this polished thing, but in the way that they challenge the idea of glamour and what feminine is, they leave it very much open to interpretation. So it's not just this one customer, like they're saying, because I see lots of different styles of girls wearing area and you know, brands that sort of share that same, I don't know, brand mission statement, versus a lot of other brands that are a bit more consumer driven. I think a brand like Aria is much more about the emotion and the sentiment behind who's wearing it versus like trying to attract a specific girl who's wearing it. And I think that's really important in driving, I think, fashion side of this whole movement forward. Yeah. yeah. Do you think they're, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's, it's funny that you say that because even in our reference, when we look at, you, you'll see a lot of party dresses, but if you look at our inspiration boards, it's really like, from like the 1800s until now, like people always have parties. There's always a moment in time that people celebrate. It's usually at night. So through these years, we really try to investigate all these codes. Like what did it mean in the 70s? How was it in the 80s? Like what was appropriate and what was not? And kind of like how does all that information lead into today into hanging at Barney's and it kind of being about the dress again. So I kind of think it's kind of like a full circle thing in the end, yeah. So I wanted to open up, you know, for any questions that you may have to the audience. Does anyone round it out? No? Oh, yes. Oh, I think we're going to get you a mic. I was about to yell. <laughs> um, my question is to the women on stage. Um, what type of clothes make you feel empowered? Well, I'll say that speaking to my friends, I just started making my own clothes recently oh. because I was really tired of asking stylists to pull me things and it was really political. Um, so I dress for my body. 
I've always had an ankle phobia, and yes, you may laugh, but uh, I've always thought my ankles were too thin, like Diana Ross's ankles in The Wiz. Um, <laughs> seriously. So I have always covered them up or put a lot of padding or wore shoes with ruching. Uh, I know my best parts, you know, so I was like, my booty and this part. So I dress for that now. And I think right now it's about celebrating yourself and the, the shapes that look good on you. What makes you feel good? I do what makes me feel good. And so, you know, yep. Jane. Um, I have this shirt that's like a double XL men's Carhartt long sleeve shirt. It's not cool. It's really old and disgusting. And my friends and I joke that that's my sexy shirt because it's when I feel like the best, most badass, and I can be like, you know, working with my hands on something or I can be going out to whatever event kind of thing. And so, I don't know. I think everyone's version of what makes them feel good, it's just, I don't know. It's a feeling, exactly. Yeah. Candace? Um, mine would be hats, like I <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, I feel weird if I leave the house without a hat. One time I did leave the house without a hat and I had to drive <laughs> back and go put one on. Like it just makes me feel like my day is gonna be off if I don't have one How on. How many hats do you have? A lot. <laughs> I can't, I, I just can't even count anymore. Um, but yeah, it's just, I just feel like awkward. I just feel like I'm just like this new awkward person if I don't have a hat on. So I like, I make sure that I put one on. It makes me feel good and I just, that's my thing. I love it. I love it. Beckett? <laughs> so I, I, I think I fluctuate between extremes when it comes to dressing a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, Beatrix she laughing does. because literally I will roll up to work in pajamas basically. But um, you know, we're always on the move. We're working with our hands. We're, you know, getting, you know, very involved in the making process. So during the day, I'm very comfortable, very pretty casual. But I think when I feel the best, it's, you know, when I really do get dressed up. And it's usually for some occasion. You know, maybe it's not a party. Maybe it's a special work meeting. But, you know, I really like to turn it up, basically. So I, I kind of fluctuate between one extreme or the other. But, yeah, that's what makes it fun. I have a random question. What's your favorite piece that we have in store for the drop? I love the jumpsuit. So yeah, it's actually our first uh, jumpsuit that we've done in the track story. So yeah, it's, it's a really cool piece and it kind of incorporates a stretch lame on the side as well. So it's inspired by the colors of LA. So it, it, it's a cool piece, yeah. Beatrix, we're gonna ask you even though, you know, <laughs> what's, your, what's your empowered piece? My shoes. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about the shoes, though, before we wrap up. I've been wearing them for two days, and I feel pretty empowered. Everyone is looking on the streets. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Got um, nice feet. Nice feet. <laughs> Do we have any more questions before we wrap up? Yes. Um, you just touched on your Carhartt shirt, and you have on a tracksuit. And you also touched on with women and some feminine not necessarily being out to be a man. How does, how do you think, how do you foresee fashion kind of taking on, you see like the LV and Prada kind of having their athletic wear and sneakers. How do you see the influence or merging of female and male when it comes to the future of fashion and in your lives in general, how has that played impact with your identity, whether it's through your brand or through yourself? The idea of The idea feminine. of masculinity and femininity being able to coexist or have one take on another identity for the future? I think it's just blurring it into maybe one thing and not such a disparate idea or a visual sense of like what feminine is versus what masculine is. Whereas I think before, in the context of fashion, maybe feminine was like a super tight Dolce & Gabbana dress with like your boobs out. And then masculine was like, you know, a Yoji Yamamoto oversized menswear suit on a woman on a runway. But I think now it's, um, I think, for me, I'm so cliche, everyone knows this about me, but Phoebe Philo, I think, had a huge pa impact at a certain time on shifting the way that people thought of menswear or somewhat menswear vibe um, and feeling the emotion of femininity behind them so that 
you know, it wasn't just like this woman whose shape you could see clearly through her dress or whatever, like everything was oversized and baggy, but you could still feel this very powerful feminine feeling. So I think that sort of vibe is where I derive my idea. I mean, within the context of fashion of, you know, not necessarily feeling like you have to be the traditional way. Um, yeah, like your attitude, I guess. And I think things are shifting in that direction anyway, with like, especially with the streetwear movement and women wearing a lot more menswear stuff and athletic. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think the boundaries have kind of like blurred a lot. And I, don't, I think, you know, more and more, it's more of a, you know. It's, it's more about more comfort also, it's, don't yeah, you think? I feel like women just also, you know, sneakers and a suit, it will just give you a different type of posture. It's just like a, another type of femininity to, to, to me. It's more about comfort, really, I think so. And, you know, like women want to wear flats. They, they want to wear suits. They... They want to wear T-shirts, you know, and and I feel like it's still very feminine in a way, but it just is more about a different posture, a different attitude. I think femininity looks more powerful now, whereas femininity before was a bit more like demure, kind frail, of and yeah, demure, yeah. coy, but for 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 the man, basically. I, I feel like that's all kind of no, we're good. <laughs> Through history, I think that femininity was described in so many ways, like. There was the foot binding thing, and that was feminine to make your feet this big. There is corsets, and, and not being able to breathe was femininity at one point. And then, then there was strange, and that was <laughs> that's that's feminine. You know, I think that it's it's changed, and right now in 2018, I think feminine is like I do not want my feet to hurt, so I'm not going to wear this. You know, like. My underarms are sweating, so I'm going to wear a suit jacket or something that doesn't make, you know, doesn't show it. Yeah. So I think that's where we are, and we're okay with that. Yeah, I, I feel like it's, like, such a personal thing now, and, you know, it's not as much up to a designer to say, oh, this is feminine or this is masculine. You know, I really think it's up to, you know, how it's interpreted and how it's worn, and that's, that's the most important thing now, not about, like, a label that somebody's putting on it and presenting to, yeah, the audience. All right, we have time for one more question, if we have any. All right, so that wraps it up. Thank you all so much for being here. Can we give a warm round of applause for our guests? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Stay tuned. We are going to have, we will have another panel in 15 minutes, I believe, in half an hour. So come back in half an hour. <laughs>